how much convincing did you take uh, Lady Gaga to do this? Because it's a big leap. It took no convincing on my part. I mean, he came over to my house and uh, we had a wonderful time together. I mean, as soon as he came in, we're both from the East Coast and we're both Italian Americans. So I was like uh, heating up all pasta from the night before in the kitchen on the frying pan. We were eating on the patio, talking about life and family. And then he wanted to sing with me. A uh, song by Creedence Clearwater Revival, uh, Midnight Special. So I was playing it on the piano and he started to sing, and I was like, oh my gosh, Bradley, your voice. I was blown away by him. I mean, he just, he sings from his soul, he sings from his gut, and when he sings, he's a storyteller. And I was just so moved by his passion, you know, for, for, the, for music and for this film. And uh, quite frankly, I, it was him that had to convince other people to have me in the movie, uh, uh, not anyone trying to convince me. I mean, he really fought for me. And you can have 100 people in the room that are watching you and 99 don't believe in you, and one does, and that was him. So, you know, all my gratitude goes to him. With your wife, <laughs> yes, <laughs> it was like it was meant to be. Jason and Emilia, you have seen each other since Game of Thrones. We have, you? have. Oh. yes. yes. We have. Yeah. Every time I come to England, mm -hmm. I oh. call my. Oh, yes. and in fact, I've just remembered. So, because this goes out, uh, we're taping this on a Thursday. So, yes. uh, this goes out tomorrow night. Yes. yes. So, will you? Tomorrow be... night. So, when we we won't be here, we'll be at my party. We'll be at her party. Her yeah. party. Yeah, Emilia's having one. Are you to going to Emilia's party? She hasn't asked yet. Do you want to? I'd love to come. There we are. Yeah. As, as long as Jason this and I here. can swap clothes and I turn up first. I am not oh, going to oh, 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 you try and get that one. Oh, here we go. Oh, oh. <laughs> it fits! Body double! I'm right, because everyone loves you together in La La Land. But this, this isn't the first time you've worked together. You've worked together with Gangster Squad. And then, in Crazy Stupid Love, we've even seen you dance together before. Interesting pose on me. <laughs> <laughs> I've noticed you're shirtless. <laughs> <laughs> So, so double whammy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but now, what happened? Because the dancing didn't go to plan in Crazy Stupid Love. Uh, no. Oh, yeah. You mean the dirty dancing lift? That's what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> well, well... We were meant to do that, and then what happened? Oh, you don't remember? Well, I, I remember, but I'd like to hear you. <laughs> You'd like to hear me tell? Your version of it? Well, listen, when I was... <laughs> <laughs> When quick I was story. about seven years old, quick story. <laughs> <laughs> when I was about seven years old, I was in gymnastics class and I was on these parallel bars that are about six feet off the ground. And I was standing on the top of the bars and the teacher was holding me by the ankles. And somehow or other, she let go. And I was standing on this bar <laughs> and I felt myself beginning to tip forward and I put my arms in like this and I fell six feet to the ground. And I broke both of my arms at the same time. Wow. And yeah. And so I, uh, I, so I, you know, I spent a whole summer. I lived in Arizona, which is like 120 degrees, which I don't know what that is in Celsius. Hot. <laughs> <laughs> quite, quite hot. So I had a cast and all the, you know, I was just, it was miserable. Um, it was the day before the last day of school. Anyway, I had internalized this. <laughs> that's a really important. It's an important story. detail. <laughs> <laughs> I really know how to tell a story. So, <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> years later, oh, we do Crazy Stupid Love. I know that we're going to do the Dirty Dancing lift. I don't know, however, that I have an internalized phobia of being, you know, lifted over someone's head at the height of about six feet. <laughs> so I run to do the lift, and Ryan lifts me over his head, and I... What did I do, Ryan? I've never had this happen, but I imagine <laughs> if a possum fell out of a tree and started... <laughs> Trying to scratch your eyes out. <laughs> it would be something similar. It was, a, it was a lot. And then it was like a full meltdown. I mean, I had like a real meltdown. Yeah, you had to go. I had to go you, crawled in, you crawled in bed and watched the uh, 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 Labyrinth. We <laughs> were in a house and she was like, I have to go watch Labyrinth. <laughs> For an hour I went and laid down. 
down crying. <laughs> to Labyrinth. This is so stupid. And then Ryan came in and was like, yeah, right? And then the directors came in and were like, yeah, right? <laughs> we're gonna use the devil. And I was like, great. <laughs> By the way, Jennifer Connelly is a revelation in this. <laughs> I didn't realize what a strange romance it was between mm. Charles and Diana. Uh, I mean, Josh, you've been already in it, so you knew the storyline was coming. Are you surprised yeah. at how odd <laughs> the romance was? Yeah, sort of. I mean, I, I sort of, I, I don't know about you, Emma, but I kind of went into it not knowing anything uh, about Anything. I mean, we sort of, ultimately, you know, in any of those kind of public marriages, there's only, there's always an account and someone's, you know, is often biased because it's like, Diana's friend thinks this and Charles's friend thinks that. And so you can never really get to the truth. And that's quite helpful because yeah, we are working you, in fiction. Yeah, and... you kind of, we kind of start from a blank slate, I guess. Yeah. In some way. And huge pressure on you in an odd way. It's okay, you've done it now. But uh, <laughs> I wouldn't have said this before you started. <laughs> but, but just because of all the members of the royal family, because kind of Diana's frozen in time, mm -hmm. we remember her differently than the others. Did you feel, I mean, you must have felt some of that pressure. Yeah, like, a lot, <laughs> an immense amount. Um, and just because she's adored, you know? And also there's this kind of sense from everyone that almost like an ownership or like her, I guess she had a relatability, I suppose you know, the people's princess, and people feel like they knew her in a different way. Um, and so, yeah, I went into it with a huge, um, yeah, feeling of pressure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hopefully it's fine. Yeah, no, it is fine. Yeah. And obviously, you know, as actors, you're, you're getting into kind of, you know, the emotional truth of the scenes and all those things, but equally, you've got to be like Charles and Diana. Mm. So what are the shortcuts to get into, say, Charles? What are the shortcuts? Right. right. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. Oh, get ready. Poke with a stick. Him. <laughs> Spinning image. Um, off we go. Okay. <laughs> so, there's, so there's a couple of things that I sort of. I mean, I didn't spend too long, kind of dwelling on the little Charles things. But there was one thing I noticed that in every time he got out of a car, he'd do this thing. Still does it now. I saw something recently. Where he's, anyway, he gets out of the car and he goes <laughs> cufflink, cufflink. So he goes checks the cufflink, checks the cufflink, checks his pocket square, and then waves. So every time. He goes to a public event or anything. It's cufflink, cufflink, pocket square. I wonder wave. if he's ever not had his pocket square and then it's completely <laughs> yeah. flawed. Yeah. 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 Had to, to get move. back in the back car. Back in the car. Back in the car. Back in the car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's like a dull yeah. serve. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Right. Less, <laughs> slightly less. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Without the grunt when he waves. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and he does speak in a very kind of. Uh, because it must have been hard not to just do an impression, because people do yeah. do impressions of him. Mm. I, think, I think so much about The Crown is <laughs> sort of doing a bit of that sort of work. I don't know what you mm. think, Emma. But I think it's <laughs> kind of finding little things that make people feel safe in the knowledge that you're not just doing some something random performance. Different. But <laughs> you feel like it is... You recognise something of Charles. So with Charles, for instance, uh, he does a thing... <laughs> he does a thing with his voice where he sort of, like, speaks <laughs> like this. So everything's, like, through teeth. Yes. And, yes. You know, yeah, and actually, Emma's yes. amazing at it. <laughs> <laughs> so good. We have competitions who could do better Charles yeah. uh, and Diana. And I'm rubbish at Diana, but she's very good at Charles. What, what, Diana. what are the shortcuts for Diana? Um, Diana's, for her voice, um, it's mainly that everything goes, sort of goes down at the end. So her pattern of speech, so it's sort of like, well, my word to get into her was always like, um, was always, all right. All right. Yeah. That's just what I'd say. <laughs> All right. But then everything she says sort of um, always goes down at the end. So <laughs> it's almost like even if she had the best time ever, <laughs> it would always sound a little bit sad. <laughs> <laughs> that is very good. It's good, isn't it? Very good. Um, you're good at it, though. I used to, right. I used to spend most of my time trying to perfect my all right. <laughs> oh, oh, do it, do it. Um, hang on. You do it with a tilt, though, head yeah. tilt. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, look, oh, yeah. yeah. That's not as good. <laughs> now, you, Grant, when you talk about your co-stars, you're quite open about talking about your co-stars. I don't remember, you, you gave an interview to Elle magazine and they asked you about your various leading ladies. Do you remember some of the things you said about them? I think it was regrettable. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, Emma Thompson, clever, funny, mad as a chair. Well, that's true, you know Emma. Yes, in yeah. fairness. Yeah. <laughs> I'm quite a mad chair. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Rennie Zellweger, delightful, also far from sane. Fair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> She's, uh, she is genuinely lovely. Yeah. But her emails are 48 pages long. <laughs> wow. I can't understand a word of them. <laughs> I'll, I'll put them on Twitter. <laughs> Do. <laughs> um, Sandra Bullock is genius a German, but too many dogs. That's <laughs> way too many dogs. Yeah. Then we get into a run of these. Julianne Moore, brilliant actress, loathes me. Yes. Rachel Weisz, clever, beautiful, despises me. Yes, yes. Drew Barrymore, made her cry, hates me. Oh, no. <laughs> that can't be no, true. No, no, um, well, J Julianne definitely hates me. Um, <laughs> no, Rachel Weisz, I think we got on fine. I, I don't know why I said that. <laughs> Maybe I was going for a comedy triple. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> well, who was the third one? Uh, Drew Barrymore. <laughs> She made the mistake of giving me notes. Which, how would you take that? Oh, well, when you're acting with someone and they... I took they, them they very well, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> wow, is that? <laughs> no. I'm so, but they believed you. They believed you. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> No, because, Sharon and Rob, you've done such a hard thing, you've written a funny sitcom that made it onto television. Because that doesn't happen. So, congratulations. Huge oh, thank, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's good. Thing. And now, so, if people haven't seen it, the premise is sort of a combination of both of your lives. Is that fair? Uh, is that fair? Yeah. And we've worked out it's maybe 49% true. 47, so. 48, so yeah. Like 23. Yes. Under, under 50%. <laughs> so, so the surprise pregnancy comes from your life, Sharon? Yeah, except mm -hmm. I don't think my husband knows that. <laughs> uh, no, he does. We were together, you know... Because um... in, the, in the sitcom, mm -hmm. you and Rob, you haven't been... Well, you've only been together... Is it six nights? It's six nights, yeah. we have a little yeah. six-night stand. Yeah. And then you go back to America. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, and he's on a date with another woman and obviously ha has moved on emotionally and then I call him and I tell him I'm pregnant and uh, and he's very kind and he comes back and we decide to have a go because we kind of like each other as well. But then the moment we sort of decide to give it a go, everything goes tits up, really. <laughs> <laughs> and what, what's a bit of your, your... The long distance bit is from your life, Rob. Yeah, my wife and I dated cross-country for a year before we finally got together, which is a terrible idea. Don't I do that, I didn't even youngsters. know that. You didn't know that? No, because one of the researchers said, well, so who had the long-distance relation? Oh, OK. Neither of us. Well, series two. <laughs> yeah, no, we, uh, uh, <laughs> I'm glad we're still learning things yeah. about each other. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I did that, and then... Be between Sharon and I, there, my wife... Not me, I've never been pregnant, but my wife is experienced <laughs> Her. She's afflicted with her third pregnancy right now, and Sharon's had two kids, so we had five pregnancies to draw from, and they're terrible. Pregnancies are terrible. Like, people tell you they're good. They're not. And uh, we wanted to show what a nightmare <laughs> they really are. <laughs> Actually, Kira, you've talked on the show about uh, doing sex scenes and how embarrassing they can be. With, <laughs> with your goss, Lanthimos... I didn't have uh, any sex scenes with your goss. No. <laughs> but he's directing them. Oh, right. uh, does he make them less embarrassing, more embarrassing, <laughs> more awkward, odder? Um... No, he's very... He, you have to feel safe to, to be able to do those things. Don't you? you have to feel secure, the director, you have to trust them. Um, and I trusted him completely. It was just all quite uh, embarrassing. Yeah, but you had a special thing to protect... Because Emma, I think, Emma Stone, yeah. she was worried about you. Yeah, well, she was... So Emma Stone had to finger me... <laughs> uh, uh, ..in order to sort of avoid finding anything that you shouldn't have found. Because it's sort of under the sheets like that. And she said... I'm a little bit worried about... Like, don't worry, don't worry, um, we'll... Uh, I know, I know. So I asked makeup department if they had a sponge. And so I put a sponge there. I said, it's all right, there's a barrier, you'll be fine. Finger sponge. It was a big, wet sponge. Mm. So... <laughs> have you face... made up this story afterwards? No. <laughs> her face was a picture. She was going up my leg and she went... Oh, <laughs> 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 it's a sponge, it's a sponge. She was... <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I have to introduce the guests, but uh, Sersha and Timothy, now you know each other. Yeah, we're best friends. Yes. <laughs> well, you might, are you? I don't know. We're as close as we could be. <laughs> okay. No, you met on was it Lady Bird you met on, or did you know each other before that? Uh, yeah, we met, we we met, met on Lady, Lady Bird. Bird. Yep. And we've uh, kind of just been together ever since, because we ended up doing press together after that. And what's the story with you calling Timothy Pony? That's not a thing. <laughs> Is it? You said it was a thing. No, it wasn't. <laughs> no, what happened was we were doing an interview when Timmy was doing stuff for Call Me By Your Name and I was doing stuff for Lady Bird. And we did an interview and I, I said in the interview that Timmy is, Timmy is like a, he's like a horse. He'll just come up to you and he'll just sort of <laughs> nuzzle you just randomly. <laughs> and, and I think of him as a, as a 
boy horse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. See? <laughs> He's like, so, oh. yeah. So it's not a thing. But I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> hey, pony. That's weird. Yeah, no, you'd never do that. That's really creepy. I heard you talking somewhere, Zendaya, how your height difference makes those stunts <laughs> more complicated. Thank you, Graham. <laughs> I didn't say it. Zendaya said it. <laughs> now, that is a good story. <laughs> it's a good story. Well, you see, there's there's a particular stunt. There, I, I don't know if it's in this, but there's a, you know, he, Spider-Man swings us on top of a bridge, and he places me there. Oh, there you and are. I, that's the bridge. <laughs> yeah, that's the bridge. We eventually <laughs> jump off of that I'm screaming. Great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so he's supposed to gently, you know, rest MJ on the bridge and walk away from her. It, because of our height difference, I obviously, if we're on the same like yeah, point, we were I, attached. We, we were attached. I would land before him. My feet <laughs> obviously hit the ground before he does. <laughs> so, <laughs> what would happen? Well, it's, there's like, it's called a bottom mark, isn't it? And the bottom mark is to basically, it's a thing that they do in stunts that is basically designed to stop you shattering your kneecaps. Oh yeah. So Zendaya would land, and I'm the superhero. I'm supposed to look cool. <laughs> and she would land, and then I would sort of land like this, and my feet would swing from underneath me, and then she would catch me. Like <laughs> <laughs> and they'd be like, cut! And I'm like, oh, I'm not doing that. <laughs> but you were actually very, very lovely about it. You were like, oh my gosh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's so nice to be caught for a change. <laughs>